So now we're going to work on some centripetal acceleration problems. So a person rounding a corner with a radius of 25 meters, so r equals 25.0 meters, at a speed, this is your tangential velocity, equals 5.0 meters per second. So we're asking for the coefficient of friction. So mu equals, who knows. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to draw a little force diagram. Here's your person. That's your person. They have their weight, mg pulling down, normal force pulling up, and then friction is pushing towards the center. And you know because if you're going in a circle, you need something to accelerate you towards the center of the circle. If not, you just fly off into the abyss. So let's talk about how this sets up now. So you start this problem just like any other force problem. Sum of forces, I'm going to start with y direction equals may. And if we notice, you're not accelerating the y direction. So you wind up with normal force plus negative mg equals zero, or n equals mg. So that's the first result. Now we can move over to the x side. In this case, this is this towards the center direction. So this is mac. So we know that this is m v squared over r. That's the definition of centripetal acceleration. So that's this is v squared over r. And we know on this side we have friction, which is friction, which equals mu times n across that, so it's just mu n. So we know this is mu mg equals m v squared over r. These m cancel out, and you are left with friction, coefficient of friction, equals v squared over gr equals 5 squared over 9.8 meters per second squared times 25 meters, you get mu equals 0 0.102. And that's your coefficient of friction. So hopefully you followed. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to work through them with you. Let's try another one. Okay, so now we have a car rounding a corner, or at the top of a hill, okay, so top of a hill, and we've got a red car because it's fast. It also looks like a box, but that's fine. So you got this red car going across. And you're going, what is the maximum speed the car can travel and stay on the road? So if we draw the force diagram, we know that this is mg. You know that the road is pushing back. Now here is the thing. When you're looking at the maximum speed to stay on the road, this normal force goes to zero. That means that the road... isn't pushing on the car. Pushing on car. Now what this means is that this car is going to feel weightless. It's like at the top of a roller coaster when your stomach feels like it's going to fall out. That's exactly what's happening. So if we set this up, there's only one direction, and we'll say sum of forces towards the center, because here's the center of our curve, right here. Okay. So if we look this up, sum of forces equals m AC. In this case, it's just mg equals mv squared over r. You'll notice that the m's cancel out, and we get v equals the square root of gr, which equals the square root 9.8 meters per second squared times the radius, which was 15 meters and you get V is equal to 12.1 meters per second. Okay, key point you're looking at, normal force is zero because you don't require the road to push you back up, all right? All of your acceleration is caused by gravity, so at this point your car is in free fall. All right, let's try one more example. So in this final example, we're looking for how many revolutions per second does a space station with a radius 1 kilometer, so let's write this, radius equals 1.00 kilometers, which goes to 
1,000 meters, 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Revolutions per second. So we're going to find velocity, but then we're going to have to get velocity in meters per second to revolutions per second. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. And have a spin to simulate Earth's gravity, which means your centripetal acceleration equals g. Now there are a couple ways to do this, but I'm going to discuss the physics way. One way, the way I'm not going to discuss is just using this equation right here, setting it equal to your centripetal acceleration equal to g, and I'm going to show that they're going to give you the same result. So if we look at this, here is our giant rotating cylinder. Here's a person on this cylinder, and this cylinder rotates. So if we're looking at this, this person, well, on Earth you would have weight, but here you don't have this weight. Here, all you know is that there is some force pushing you in, this normal force. Now to simulate on Earth, so this is Earth, you have mg pulling down, you have normal force pulling up, and you get your normal force is equal to mg. So if we want to simulate Earth-like conditions, we get sum of forces equals mac, this would be your normal force, equals mac, this would be mg, because on Earth, right, your normal force is equal to your weight. So mg equals mv squared over r. M's cancel. Oh, and look, we're left with this g equals centripetal acceleration. So you get v equals square root gr. And then by plugging in these numbers, we know g, we know 9.8, meters per second squared times r, which was 1,000 meters. Square root that, and you'll get v equals about 99 meters per second. But it asks for radians per second, so let's convert that real quick. All right, so I'm going to draw a top-down view, and you have some radius. Your radius is 1,000 meters. You have some velocity, which we just solved for, 99 meters per second. And if we're looking at this, your path that you're going to go is going to go all the way around. All right. So if we know that velocity, here, we're going to go velocity equals change in position over change in time. One revolution, one revolution equals... 2 pi r. All right. So if you have 99 meters per second, you want to cancel out meters. So you know one revolution is 1,000 meters times 2 pi meters. Okay. You will get v is equal to, or your velocity is equal to 0 0.0158 revolutions per second. And this just comes about because we're using distance to convert distance to revolutions. One revolution is the circumference around this path. Hope that helps.